In recent years, a therapy known as CAR T cell therapy has become a breakthrough treatment for cancer, particularly blood cancers. First discovery began in the laboratory in 1992 with the idea that genetic engineering could introduce new genes into immune cells, specifically T cells, thus helping them recognize and fight disease. After years of experimentation and testing, it wasn't until 2017 that the first CAR T cell treatment was approved by the FDA for CD19-directed CAR T cell therapy in relapsed refractory acute lymphoblastic leukemia in children and young adults. CAR stands for chimeric antigen receptor. The name is derived from the ancient Greek mythology of a monster that had a lion's head, a goat's body, and a serpent's tail. Different genetic material in one. So chimera is used to describe something that contains two or more different types of DNA. In this case, the car has an antibody from a B cell and a signaling region from a T cell, thus combining both antigen binding and T cell activating functions into a single receptor. CAR T cells have undergone several generations of experimentation to improve their functionality. The first generation consisted of three main components, extracellular, transmembrane, and intracellular domains. The extracellular segment is a single chain variable fragment, which is derived from the antigen binding region of the monoclonal antibody CD19, found on the B cell target. This antibody recognizes tumor associated antigens and can be engineered to target virtually any antigen if an appropriate cancer specific target is identified. The transmembrane domain is where the CAR binds to the cell membrane. The intracellular domain contains the CD3. This is the T cell signaling portion of the receptor. The first generation only had the CD3's region which was required for activation and cytotoxicity. The second generation added a co-stimulatory region like CD28 or 41BB to boost the proliferation, cytokine secretion, resistance to apoptosis, and in vivo persistence. Third generations combined multiple co-stimulatory domains such as CD28 41BB receptor or CD28 OX40 to boost the T cell activity including expansion, cytotoxicity, persistence, and cytokine secretions. T cells for CAR modification can be derived from the patient's own blood, autologous, or from the T cells of another healthy donor, allergenic. Thousands of T cells are taken through a process known as leukocyte apheresis. In this process, you collect the whole blood, extract the immune component, and return the rest of the blood back to the patient. The sample is then frozen and transferred to a manufacturing site. In the laboratory, the cells are enriched for T cell populations. An inactive viral vector that can't cause disease but can carry and introduce CAR genetic material into the cell is used. The viruses are packaged with the CAR genes and then the T cells are transduced with the virus. The vector inserts the CAR DNA into the host T cells, and they are now able to produce these CARs. The genetically modified T cells are expanded by growing cells in a laboratory until there are millions of them. This process can take two to three weeks and involves a phase of rigorous quality testing. The bulk CAR T cells are frozen and transported back to the treating facility. Currently, the cost of treatment for a single patient is around 500,000 Australian dollars. Before the modified CAR T cells can be reinfused into the patient, they must undergo lymphodepletion chemotherapy roughly one week prior to wipe out existing T cells. This process eradicates immunosuppressive cells and primes the environment for better expansion and persistence. Then, the modified CAR T cells are reinfused and now go in search of the cancer. After CAR T cells are infused into the patient, they act as a living drug against cancer cells. 
When they come into contact with their specific CD19 target antigen on the cancer cell, CAR T cells bind to it and become activated, then proceed to proliferate and become cytotoxic. CAR T cells destroy cells through several mechanisms, including extensive stimulated cell proliferation, increased cytotoxicity, and by causing increased secretion of cytokines, thus recruiting other immune cells. Over one to three weeks following infusion, the CAR T cells proliferate then contract, leaving a fraction of persistent CAR T cells. They stay in the patient's bloodstream for years and mount a response whenever they come in contact with the CD19 on the tumor. The main benefit of this treatment being that it bypasses traditional T cell target recognition and the immune evasion and escape that is often seen in cancer. Rare but serious events include cytokine release syndrome caused by rapid release of inflammatory cytotoxic factors from the CAR T cells as they reach peak expansion and activity in the body. Neurotoxicity can be caused by their ability to cross the blood-brain barrier, stimulating an immune response, including engagement with endogenous immune cells. Patients are carefully monitored for the first month following infusion. With only two constructs currently on the market, the race is on to expand the feasibility and utility of CAR T cells in cancer medicine in the future. Over 60 target in numerous clinical trials are progressing around the world. Imagine the possibilities now that we are able to genetically modify our own immune cells to recognize and fight disease.